nerdy stuff. Yeah, we can geek out <laughs> together, which is great. That's so fun. <laughs> We're talking about self-portrait as part of Breaking the Binaries. It's a really exciting project that uses AI image classification and gender and generation of new images and augmented reality and buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. <laughs> So many technologies. Oh, it took me, I reckon it took me about two weeks to be like, so what's stable diffusion? <laughs> what's replicate? Which one is doing what? How does it all connect? But I guess like with your research, it's, it's about getting deep into those topics. Yeah. Whereas I feel like as a creative practitioner on my end, um, we stay quite surface level, I guess, on, on topics and concepts um, and focus more on yeah, how are people going to use it and how are people going to interact with this particular artwork? While I did respond to the project brief, I actually didn't, um, I, I it was with a different project entirely. Oh. And um, Ari came back to me quite late and went, hey, you know, uh, we're not going with this project, but do you think you could do something kind of, you know, we want to do something a bit, you know, interesting with augmented reality and, you know, portraiture. And do you think you've got some ideas around that? And I was like, yeah okay what if we used stable diffusion and what if we did this this and this and i put together a quick demo and they were like yes harry and tilly were boom let's go and i'm like oh no <laughs> and they said how comfortable are you with uh, user experience and user interfaces and i went i am not and they went we've got just the person for you seeing a prototype at that early stage mm -hmm. is so helpful for me because usually when science gallery approach me they come with an idea <laughs> whereas when you have a prototype it's like the functionality and what it does is already clear it's just how are we going to communicate that oh, i wanted to know that i could do it before i say before i said yes i'll do this project i wanted to know that it was actually doable the original place was very different to what it is now and um it was always about gender though and about how these systems create images around gender. So um, we're looking at stable diffusion, which is a latent diffusion generator. So it uses text prompts to create an image through something called diffusion, where it sort of, it creates like noise on a TV that it then resolves into an image. This was brand new technology when they approached me and I was like, I don't know, can I do this? And it was so much fun to sort of go, I know that there's biases in these systems. How can we interrogate that? How can we explore that? What can we do to bring it out to show the biases? And yeah, I think that we've been really successful in our um, exploration of the words behind the biases and the, the terminology and the labels that AI attaches to us. Actually, it was about my family talking about um, how you know we take on all these labels for ourselves and how uh, they they kind of came from an environment where labels are bad you know you don't want labels and um, there's kind of been a bit of a generational shift in how actually labels help you find your communities labels help you identify who you are and feel connected to that and that's a really powerful thing this was about in a way it was about the idea of claiming those labels for yourself for me i didn't really quite i guess understand i guess the the depth of a label and, and what it actually means. I've never really thought about it, you know. Um, so when I heard you uh, like say that story, um, it kind of shifted things a lot for me in terms of how I um, viewed the project and how important it was to kind of work on that element of interactivity where people aren't just generating, but they're actually claiming those labels for themselves. That shifts the whole work to something completely different to what we started off with, which was just kind of prompts, I guess, given to the machine to interpret. AI profiles us every day with what we're doing. It profiles our interactions on social media, it profiles our music, it profiles our videos, it profiles the way we write, the way we walk, um, our faces, our everything is profiled constantly and we have no say yeah. over any of that. And I think also like, I feel like an important part of self-portrait was the ability to give access to the public who may not have those technical skills and technical abilities to, to question the biases in AI, abilities to 
change what AI is kind of saying about them and giving them kind of agency over their labels and what they identify with, which is a really beautiful part of the work and how it, how it kind of ended up. It wasn't just a generator mm. as, as like we kind of had the prototype be. It was like a generator, but then giving people access to that generator to reframe what they felt their labels were, which I think is like a really critical part of that narrative. Absolutely, that's the most critical part of the narrative, I think, because we can't just accept the labels that an AI gives us. We can't just accept that it's going to profile us and that's it, there's nothing we can do, no. AI is the best medium to interrogate AI, I think. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful way Very to... Meta. It's so <laughs> meta. But it's a wonderful way to show um, these problems using the, the very system that has the problems. It's, yeah. It becomes a way to clearly illustrate it that I think that making a, a work in a more traditional format might not succeed in. Yeah, totally. That's why I love working with artists that have like technical capabilities because you're actually, you are doing that. You're using technology to question technology. Yeah. Um, and it's really, I, I guess, current it's the technology of now and what people are actually using and, and questioning that now, which is, um, I think, super important as opposed to, yeah, something that's static and like as soon as you make a static work, essentially, it, it almost degrades in its ability to talk about technology now because it's not evolving with that technology. It's kind of just, it is just what it is at that current time, which I think, yeah, is really important in digital works.